Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Way back in uh, 1970, uh, there were two neighbors, uh, myself and next door neighbor, who decided that we wanted to recreate for our children uh, some of the old uh, activities and events that we uh, um, did when we were youngsters. And as a result, some of the old equipment came out some of the cars, some of the um, things that we did in the field uh, when we were a kid, we recreated and it was an educational experience for our children. Back in the early stages, there was one little truck that was our food stand, uh, probably, uh, I think there was about five tractors, uh, a couple, three old cars, one thresh machine, and uh, a lot of eager neighbors that wanted to find out what were they doing over on this farm at that stage when the threshing machine activities had vanished. But we wanted our children to have the learning experience of what we had when we were youngsters. Since then, expanded every year, and uh, we had a very positive reaction. There was no one said, oh, I don't want to see that in the picture. I don't want to hit because no, they were anxious to, to see what we'd have to add the following year. And as a result, uh, a lot of those uh, people uh, are now, uh, even the younger ones that were young at our time, they're getting old and, and uh, their grandkids are doing the things that we started with. In fact, uh, back uh, then there were people that call say, well now, you know, I'd like to help but how could I help? Uh, I've got this tractor that was my, or, or a piece of equipment that my grandfather pulled with his horses. Could we bring that over? And then things started to add uh, to uh, our collection. So now we're just a minor part. I, I might add here that for a couple of years they met uh, outside of the Albert City. And then they came out here and, and everything just grew and grew and grew. Everyone who comes with whatever they have in the back of their pickup or their trailer is accepted here and the general purpose, the main purpose that we have this event probably is to uh, encourage collecting, restoring, displaying and demonstrating whatever that uh, activity is, whether it's or, or a piece of equipment it's with a purpose for those very things that we're talking about here just now. And, and I might add here that, uh, of course, this is kind of entertainment. And to me, one of the important things about entertainment is for that moment or those hours that people are out here, they forget their aches and pains, their, their emotional problems, their financial stuff. And, and they're, they're living in another world out here. Maybe it's just for a couple hours. They bring people from the nursing homes here, and you can just see the smiles on their face, and you can see kids that will touch a horse for the first time, and uh, it, it's just a thrill to watch the various ages is how they, uh, they go. You must see a lot of grandmas and grandpas telling young kids oh, yeah. how it was done yeah. and being able to show it. The rewarding part is when grandpa can bring something with him with his grandson, with his granddaughter, to have that experience together. And we see a lot of that out here today. A number of years ago, I was, uh, we were planting corn, and the young fellow stopped me afterwards and said, can I visit with you a little bit? Make a long story short, he said, I'm from New York City. I come, uh, I've driven across the, uh, United States, and uh, I saw this, and I'm going to stop in. And uh, he ended up spending two days here, and he says, he was a college student, he says, this is the most interesting two days I've spent my whole trip across the United States America. 
So uh, you reach out to those people as well. You know, it's not it's not only those that are here. But, uh, oh, I remember when Grandpa said they were doing this and so, and uh, this is a chance for them to experience it.
which is the size of a whisk broom with a children's size handle. Just a little bit there. And uh, this machine is similar to a vise that holds um, the broom in place while we can stitch it. She's winding a broom, and this is, uh, the handle goes through this vise here. She uses her foot to turn the wheel so that the um, chain goes and turns that handle as she's winding it up. The wire comes off of the spool as well. So all of this equipment, or the majority of it, was owned by a gentleman named Floyd Davis, who used to live up um, in Marathon, just north of here a few miles. In the 1930s, he did this for a living. He grew the broom corn. Um, have you seen that before? This is broom corn. It grows um, just like field corn that we have all over around here, except it doesn't have an ear. This is the tassel, and it's beautiful colors, some purples, browns, kind of like Indian corn. Once it's ready to go, you cut it off, the tassel, hang it upside down to dry. Once it's dry, they would have used this rake to rake out all of those seeds. And then you have your nice lengths that you can cut and use to make your broom. So we purchase our broom corn for the show because it's too much for us to, you know, process it in the morning. And the brooms are put together, but the majority of this equipment was donated by Floyd Davis and his family many years ago. So, in fact, the machine over there says the patent date of September 1878, which is kind of neat. I'm Lindsay Hepworth, and I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. Okay. Were you here with your parents? Yeah, the, they went, just went, my mom just went back to camp, and my dad would be in camp. And what are you doing? I'm actually washing the clothes from back in the old days. I <laughs> can't find things. But, see, when they have stains, we have to put them on a washboard. And then we take a bit of soap and we rub it, but I can't use soap. Because it's just fake. But this pushes the fabric down. The air comes through these. And this is how it goes. And. If somebody could get this for me. Somebody like somebody to turn that? Okay. Yeah, that's good. This direction? No, wrong way. And then when it happens, it just drains the water down from under underneath it. You're going to need to go a little faster, please. It just drains the water, and then it goes into the venting pan where you vent the water. Like that. When it's done, all the water's drained when it goes into the venting pan. And then this, you hold on to here, and you push it down to make sure you get all the soapy water out. And this is all the soap that they used to use. Get it? Some people, if they don't know what they're doing, yes, sometimes they do get the thing get stuck. But me, like she, like she taught me, she told Joanne over there, she told me not to put my fingers here because lots of girls have injured the fingers by doing that. What kind of stew? Ham. Very nice. There's ham, carrots, potatoes, celery. And then she wants cauliflower, broccoli, and cabbage to go in there. Super. You're gonna run out of room. Yes, I am. <laughs> it won't all fit. Are you guys all from Iowa? Um, yes, we're from Des Moines. Okay. This is our first time up here. Do you do, um, is it called a reenactment? Is that what you're doing? Is it called a rendezvous? What we're doing is, um, it's actually considered a living history. I see. Um, our group is much larger, but, um, we're up here just to show, get people to, used to the guns and things like that. And then, just show what our tents look like and all that type of stuff. And If you don't want to put the rest of that in, that's okay. Okay. And we're just gonna talk to talk to people, educate what we do, that type of thing. Do you do? Are you guys doing something most weekends during the summer? Yeah, we go to about 10, 11 events a summer. Uh -huh. Our season starts in April and goes through October. And we just do some small town stuff like this, or we do um, different things, and then we do actual big Civil War events. <laughs> Why do you feel it's important to do this? 
just all part of history. Um, if we remember where we came from, hopefully we won't repeat the same mistakes and end up back there again. Do you find that people are pretty interested? Yes, they are. They're interested in what side we would be for, <laughs> um, why we're not for certain sides, or um, interested in uh, just what it's all about and how we do this type of thing and why we do it, stuff like that. And for kids, it's got to be a lot more intimate to see the stuff, to talk to people, than just to read it out of the book. Yes, we have four kids. We do this as a family. Um, we don't do sports. This is our sport. We spend all summer doing this. Um, we meet tons of people. Um, they learn about everything else while we're here because they're out walking around learning about farms and tractors and stuff. Um, so they learn from us, we learn from them, that type of thing. So and it's something we do as a family. Um, it's brought us closer. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. The first thing we do is we try to find some way to make ice cream without having to turn the handle. That's the, that's number one. And so I made this contraption here and that, that does that. And then we use the old recipe that's been, as far as I know, my grandmother did it, my mother did it. It's just, it's just whole milk, whipping cream, pasteurized eggs, and a little, Wat, little Watkins vanilla. And I wonder what I forgot. I think that's about it. Oh, sugar. Of course, sugar. And that's all there is to it. And, uh, How's business? Booming. Always is. And it's, you know, it's good. It's good. Our ice cream's good because you put everything in it. It's good. Yeah, wholesome. No shortcuts. Uh, Watkins vanilla you can't beat. Uh, it just makes a difference. The end product. That's all there is to it. We started out making two gallons at a time. And then you... We'd uh, pack the freezer and then you'd get some sacks and skinny sacks to put on top of the freezer. Sit on the freezer, jacked up the hind wheel of an old Model T and, and her Model A and, and uh, a twine between the handle and the spoke and the wheel. And then when the twine broke, then the ice cream was frozen. <laughs> and that worked out pretty good, except we couldn't keep up. <laughs> Thank you very so, much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Distance of 238.61 feet. Next one up to clean up the track.
Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website, www.ruralheritage.com, to shop online.